Recently, I've been working on some projects that have called for a thrust tester. I've wanted to make one for a while, but I never got a chance to. And the website that I usually buy my parts from generally tells me the prop test data for each motor. Now that I'm going to be experimenting with ducted fans, I'd like to see how they affect thrust and how length of the ducted fan affects thrust as well. To do that, I needed to build a contraption like this one here. You may be wondering, how does one of these things work? Can I get a basic high school physics explanation of it? Or more commonly, what is math? You've come to the right place anyway. Here's a blurry picture of the thrust tester. I'll be using this to explain everything. This is torque. It's important. And this is the torque equation. Because torque is a twisting force that tends to cause rotation, you will need an axis of rotation and a force tangent to the circular arc of the way that the object spins. The way the motor is mounted is a perfect representation of this. Now let's revisit the torque equation. Because both of the arms are at a 90 degree angle and move on the same axis of rotation, this equation can be applied to different points in the stand. If I were to pick a point here and here, the torque at these two points would be exactly the same. However, because these points are different distances from the axis of rotation, the force felt at each, when applied to one of the points, is going to be different. In short, this is how leverage works. If you have one socket wrench with a long handle and one socket wrench with a short handle, the one with the long handle is going to be easier to move. Because the force you're supplying is farther away from the pivot point, you have to supply less force to get more force out of the pivot. This is also why it's incredibly important that the motor supplying the force is the same distance away from the pivot point as the point contacting the scale. That way you don't have to do any extra calculations in order to get accurate results on your thrust tests. Scientific explanation out of the way, here's the rest of the features. Here's a demonstration of it in action. I also have an electronic analyzer hooked up to the battery. As you can see, my battery's dead, so it tells me that it's dying. Here's my jerry-rigged axle and joint. It looks more robust than it is, and it does not have a lot of resistance, trust me. Anyway, that's about it. You'll see this in more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I want